Oh, hey, man, uh, Games Workshop, they sent you here a box of orcs, but uh, seeing as they're my spirit animal, I'm, uh, I'm gonna keep it. Now, I assume if I go to their website, there's gonna be videos on how to paint these, right? Technically, yes. Now, I can tell by the tone of your voice that you're insinuating you could do a better job, so uh, why don't you put your money where your mouth is, Mr. Big Shot, and uh, show them how it's done. All right. You get a shiny new box of minis, you get them built up, and you're immediately at a crossroads. To your left, you can get them painted as fast as possible, and they end up looking like ass. To your right, you can meticulously paint each one to the best of your abilities and probably never finish. And it doesn't help that even the official Citadel color guides push you into one of these two silos. What they call battle ready is either slap down base colors and hit it with a messy wash, or slosh the model with contrast paint. And what they call parade ready is a work up of color depth, which usually includes 20 different paints on each surface, that there's no way you'll ever finish that army in your lifetime. But why do we have to choose a system that takes the same steps over and over again, either to do them as fast as possible, or to take so much time that there's no way that you keep your sanity by the time you're finished? No, I think we can come up with a better system. And what better model to showcase this system than the brand new sculpt of Boss Snickrot? Because I never need an excuse to paint another orc. We'll start inconspicuously enough with a black primer and a white zenithal from above. Now here I'm using an airbrush, but feel free to use a rattle can of white primer from above or even a dry brush to get that nice gray to white zenithal effect. But it's important that we do this. For future steps, it's gonna make our job much easier and much faster. It's funny, I'm just now realizing how much bigger these orcs are compared to something like a little Cadian. I don't know if they've been sneakily increasing the size to give them the same primaris effect as we're seeing in Marines, but uh, I don't mind this at all. Big, fun orcs with lots of volumes and muscles are the perfect thing to paint at the 32 millimeter scale. Onto the painting, and we'll be using standard paint brushes for this entire system. You won't need an airbrush. I want to mimic the neat pale greenish blue color of Snickrot's skin, but I'm not exactly sure what color mix it is. From the paints on my shelf, Sons of Horus Green looks like a good starting point, so I try out a few light colors mixed with it to determine which one looks closest to the box art. We often get hung up with decisions like this, thinking we need to know the exact recipe in order for us to even proceed. But in reality, if it's even moderately close, it's gonna turn out looking great. Also, by going through this color testing process, you'll gain confidence in not needing the exact color of an exact brand in order for your dark angels to look exactly like dark angels, or whatever. I mean, it's not like a company would ever make you feel like you must rely on their exact paints in order to make chapter accurate paint schemes, right? I ended up using the mix with Kislev Flesh because I thought it looked relatively close, but more importantly, it will give that hint of warm flesh in the highlights later on. I really like to have a bit of warmth that I build in with highlights for skin colors, even if they start in a weird color like green, purple, or blue. It almost makes you feel like there's a bit of blood running underneath the skin and it makes that texture feel alive. Well, we're only a few minutes into this video and I feel like I've gotten ahead of myself already. I haven't explained to you why we're starting with painting the skin and how this fits into our quick paint scheme that you can be proud of system. To put it simply, I'm dividing any mini I paint into two parts. Part one is the stuff I'm gonna try hard on, and part two is the stuff that I'm gonna speed through just to get the model done. And the goal I set for myself is to spend roughly equal amounts of time on each of these two parts for any model. For this model, I'm gonna try hard on all the skin and his face, which I'm gonna to wanna to spend about two to three hours on. That means for the rest of the models, I have those same two to three hours to get it completely finished, which is easier said than done considering that boss Snickrot here now officially holds the crown for most extraneous bullshit for any Games Workshop model ever produced. After the base coats, I go in with a thinned down Coelia green shade and I follow all the recessed areas of the muscles. This builds up a faint soft shadow that helps define all of those shapes. Then we come in with a darker, still thinned paint and define all the deepest recesses with a thin line. 
This really punches up the volumes of each muscle while reinforcing that blue-green color that's so unique to snick rot skin. Now, the good thing about a system like this is its flexibility. Not only will you get faster at each step as you are progressing through your army, you can actually choose to cut certain steps on certain parts of the army. Let's say you had 50 infantry to paint. You could cut down on one of these two shade steps. Always go with the more impactful one. For this one, it's that second shadow. Keep that one and ditch the first. Now, you may be thinking it would be much faster for you to do an all-over wash on the skin to bring in those shadows, but you'd be wrong. If you did it that way, the first step of highlighting would be to repaint all of the base color over all of the non-shadow areas. Whereas, we get to start right in with our first highlight, which is the same colors as our base color. We're just mixing in more Kislev flesh, so that highlight is lighter and a little bit warmer. For the second highlight, I mix in an off-white instead of more of the flesh color because I don't want to go too far into that orange-pink realm. Here, I'm keeping the paints a little thicker and I'm making sure to hit all the pronounced details around the face, as well as high points of the muscles and important details like veins, as well as lines on the elbows and knuckles. Now, you may be thinking that this is an awful lot of work to spend on one orc's skin when you have an entire wad of paint. And to that, I say, Wah. Hear me out here. You will not be putting this much effort across the entire model. When we see a model on the table or pick one up to appreciate it, there are certain things that naturally stand out and read to our eyes as a well-painted model. We can't avoid that fact, and so we're going to have to put in a little bit of effort here that will pay off big time when the model's finished. And getting a little bit of practice here on this slightly more elaborate version of miniature painting is a great thing. It's going to level up your painting so much quicker. Also, we get to move on before we get burnt out because we're not putting this much effort in on anything else in the model. When you decide you want to paint a leader of your army as best as you possibly can, or you want to enter a painting competition, well, you've already been practicing for that a little bit at a time, and those models are really going to show how far you've come. I actually found myself a little ahead of schedule after painting all of the skin, so I decided to give a little bit more effort onto his pants to show you what that would look like in comparison to something like skin. But to be honest, the effort of using black to line all of the folds and build in some faint shadows on the already really dark pants really didn't warrant the extra time. So in this very specific situation, I probably should have just gone with a null oil wash. Today's video was brought to us by Surfshark, and being the savvy internet user that I know you to be, you know all about virtual private networks. Heck, I thought I knew everything I needed to know, and I didn't really need one. But after digging into what makes Surfshark unique, I realized I was definitely missing out, and I took the leap. Of course, you can change your device location with the tap of your screen to change the regions on your favorite streaming service, unlocking a massive amount of new shows and movies. And yes, it keeps all of your online activity locked down and safe. So all those sites you visit don't get to collect your data and inevitably have it fall into the hands of the wrong people when there's a data breach. But what really seals the deal for me is Surfshark's flexibility and pricing. We can have every single device in our household under one account. And I'm embarrassed to say how many phones, tablets, game systems, PCs, and laptops we have. But don't judge me. I know you have a buttload too. Unlimited devices on a single account. No one does that other than Surfshark. Oh, and it's only $2.49 a month. Plus, if you use promo code NINJON at checkout, you get three months for free. So don't delay like I did. Click on the Surfshark link in the video description below and keep your data safe. And get more out of all those streaming services you're already paying for. I do think that adding the two steps of edge highlighting to define the hard lines and edges did go a long way to not make the pants just fade into a dark blob, though. So yeah, I guess it wasn't a total loss. Do that part, not the other part. And just like that, we're already done with all the try-hard parts on this model. Now we're going to focus on speed. And there are two different approaches we can take, and today I'm going to show you a little bit of both. 
First is the classic GW method of solid base coat, quick wash, and then a quick highlight. Materials that don't have a lot of details and edges work best for this, like these straps. The most important factor here is that we don't be shy in how bright we go with our highlights. Just make sure the paint is roughly mixed 50-50 with water, and then you can hit the edges and add a few scratches. Don't stress about making mistakes or hitting every single edge in detail. The key is that this highlight gives some depth to the model without spending much time making it perfect. Someone looking at this model does not give a shit about the straps, let's be honest. But we want to make it look like we spent some time and those straps are there and that's all we're going to do. The second speed method we're going to use is a solid layer of contrast or speed paint over all the non-metallic surfaces. And even if you do slop some contrast over those metallic bits, it's no problem. We'll paint over those later anyway. There's no real reason why you can't use one of these two tried and true speed methods over the other for the entire model or an entire army. For instance, if you don't have any contrast paint and you don't want to spend nine bucks a bottle for it, just don't do that part. I will say that I do find the actual value of contrast paint in this method is we get to entirely skip the shading step, which saves us time, but it can be a pain because if you make a mistake and get paint where you don't want it with contrast paint, you have to either immediately take a clean, damp brush and soak up that paint, or you have to wait until it's completely dry and repaint the surface with a light gray or white before you can go over that other area with more contrast paint. And as you go around and do the base coats for each of the sections of your model, you'll realize that we're not actually that far from completing this model. And usually, if you're anything like me, this is the point in the painting process where I'm excited to just finish it and move on to the next one, which is good because that's exactly what we've set ourselves up to do. From here, we just go through and do those very quick edge highlights across all the different surfaces so those shapes are defined. Don't worry too much about what color you use. As long as it's a bit brighter than the base color and you thin the paint a little bit, it'll look great. I'll often only use a handful of colors for highlighting all the different surfaces across an entire model. This will save me a ton of time. Something for tans or grays, something for warm colors, something for cool colors, and then just an off-white for anything like bones. Final step is to crank out all of these metallics. And I've got a little trick I've been working with lately and I'm pretty happy with it. So now seems like as good a time as any to share it with y'all. Basically, I just paint every metallic surface on the entire model the same mid-tone silver. It doesn't matter if it's eventually gonna be rusty metal, shiny chrome, black metal, copper, gold, bronze, whatever. Just put the silver on everything. Does this make sense? No, of course not. The part of painting metallics that I really enjoy is messing with non-metallic paints that I put over top of them after that base coat. For black metal, I slap on a coat of contrast black. For copper, I use Fire Slayer Flesh. For gold, I use a 50-50 mix of Fire Slayer Flesh and Iandin Yellow. You can boost up the shadows and subtle differences in color tone with a variety of washes. It's really easy and fast. So if you wanted things to look slightly different across the entire model, you can do that really quickly as you add extra layers here and none there. From there, you just edge highlight with a standard silver over everything. Yes, even the coppers, golds, and whatever else. It will look correct, don't stress about it, and don't take more time adding more paint colors to your system.
And for basing, nothing says get it done fast and still look cool, like mashing a couple of pigment colors on it and calling it good. And just like that, our model is done. Shit, I forgot he's got these little glowy night vision goggle lenses. And the way I approach these is the same things I do for gems or anything colorful and shiny. Just paint them all completely white, go back through with a really bright contrast paint, put a little dab of that on there, and then when that's dry, put a little dot of white in the top right corner, and now we're done. And now we've arrived at the part of the video where I ask you a question and then I brace myself for impact for your answers down in the comment section. Does your eye focus on the important parts, the skin and the face? And does that let you influence how well you think the entire model is painted? And maybe you'll disagree with me, but I think so. I think our eyes are drawn to the important parts of the model. And if those are painted well, everything else can just be fine. I think that a painting system where you put the same steps into action in the same amount of time over each section of the model makes that painting process boring and it doesn't make the best use of your time at the painting desk. For me, being flexible in what techniques, what level of effort, and even how much speed I take on different parts of the model means I have more fun, I'm proud of the final thing, and most importantly, I get to move on to the next model faster. I've painted a number of full Warhammer armies, always under some pretty tight time constraints. I felt like if I just tried my hardest and painted a full army, it's too much, it's overwhelming. But I think this system, this system is how I'm gonna paint my next Warhammer army. Thank you for hanging out today. I appreciate spending some time with you. And also thanks for hitting those like and subscribe buttons. They help others find the channel and let you know when my next video goes live. And an even bigger thank you to all of you that support me by using the links down in the video description to buy your hobby goodies. That supports me. Buying a shirt. That supports me. And the biggest one, being a member of my Patreon and hanging out with me on the Discord. Because of those people, I'm able to do this full time, which is wild to consider. I'm going to see you back here again next week for a Leviathan of a video. And until then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray. See, the wonderful things about orcs is orcs is wonderful things and their tops is made out of rubber and their bottoms is uh, made out of springs. Show them how it's done. <laughs>